Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today we're going gold mining. See that two hundred dollar bill roll into the bag? <laughs> Won't you tell everyone what you're doing? So this is an old mining property, and I've just acquired a lease on it. And so right now we're up here sampling some old uh, piles, kind of cleaning up what the old miners left behind, and doing some bulk sampling to see where the gold is and what kind of grade we're looking at, grind size, uh, but it's our first summer and right now our goal is kind of to get our feet under us. We're taking out a bulk sample. Our, uh, our plan is to get about 30 tons or so down this season and then over the fall and winter run it through our turnkey system and uh, recover the gold, see what kind of recoveries we're getting and then make a mining plan for the underground veins in the next couple of years. Uh, but there's enough left over uh, that's easy to get to and you, you literally just come up with your truck and dig it up and put it on that uh, we wanted to get that first and get some cash flow going, get a little gold produced, and then uh, we can really get our feet under us and make a plan for next year. So from our sampling and our testing, these piles are running anywhere between a quarter an ounce and half ounce of gold per ton. And this truck, we're hauling about three tons a load down at a time. I've brought a trailer up, so I'd like to I'd like to get about five tons a trip. But uh, right now, like I can say we're just we're just getting the leftovers. You can tell the ore by the the rusty red color. It's all pretty oxidized here. Um, and this is literally stuff that they left over, forgot about, um, was maybe too low grade for them when they were, uh, when they were mining. But uh, now all the work's been done. It's, it's been taken out of the underground, drilled, blasted, mucked, and piled here. Um, so now it's pretty easy as long as you got a way to mill it. Uh, it's pretty easy to just pick it up and, and take it. But here in a little bit after we're done loading these sacks, we'll go underground and we'll take a look at the veins and uh, I'll give you a little tour of the underground workings. How's this pile compared to some of the other piles you got down there? For size? Yeah. Uh, this is, there were three piles all together and this is probably about, they're all about the same size. Yeah. There's probably eight or ten bags here. They got ten bags off the other one and fourteen bags off that one down there. Sure. But you got, uh, none of this is the quartz vein, this is all host rock. Uh, no, there's there's quite a bit of quartz in here. Okay, nice. The, the, 
the waste rock or the host rock is all just stuff that's probably been mixed around or it was stuff that they, uh, you know, the, they blasted too heavy and got a bunch of wall rock in it or something. So it definitely dilutes the grade. But uh, for us digging it up, it's easy to dig it up and crush it all and run it through the system. All right, so now we're actually underground uh, in some of the old workings on the property that we've leased. And I wanted to talk through a little bit about the geology here and uh, the gold vein and some of the structure. This is the quartz vein that the old timers were mining. The, the foot wall is somewhere down in here. It's a little bit hard to tell because the vein's all oxidized. But somewhere about here is the foot wall. And then you have quartz all the way up through to about here. So the vein that you're looking at is probably about three feet wide. Uh, the main minerals in this vein are pyrite, pyrotite, uh, and a little bit of chalcopyrite. The gold is typically free uh, milling, so when you crush it up, you can concentrate it out on a shaker table or a sluice. Uh, but this is, this is what the miners were after, and we're standing in the old stope, and it's really hard to get a shot of it in the dark here, but uh, there's, it's essentially a big room that the old miners blasted and mucked out all the, the, old, uh, all the vein material. They took it down to the mill, and this is where they stopped. This was their working face, and they stopped here because, you know, they ran out of money or the mill burned down or whatever. There was some problem they had, and this was as far as they got. Uh, but you can see a little bit of the mineralization here. Uh, again, I, the light's pretty bad in here, but um, there's a little bit of that uh, pyrite stuff. The gold is typically associated with the, the other minerals. When you have barren white quartz like this, it usually isn't very high grade. Um, but yeah, this is this would be a candidate for us or a target to come back in and mine. The grade of this vein averages somewhere between half and one ounce a ton. And the, the width, it, it pinches and swells, but uh, typically it averages about two to three feet. And it's more or less flat lying, kind of dipping to the south about 20, 25 degrees. All right, so we're down in the lowlands now, and you can see the bags behind me that we brought out. Uh, we actually didn't have uh, a good chance to do any more filming up in the hill because when we came out from underground, it was raining really, really hard. And so we, uh, we took off out of there and got our bags down. But um, we've, we've brought down 35 bags of ore. You can see them behind me here. The bags average right around a ton or maybe a little bit more uh, per bag. So we're hoping we got about 35 or 40 tons down here to play with this fall. Um, but we'll go take a look at some of the ore in these bags real quick, and then uh, we'll show you the milling process on uh, some footage from earlier this summer on the same ore, um, just from a bag we brought down a little bit earlier. We're going to do a lot more videos of uh, our underground workings up there over the next couple of weeks, and uh, then this fall we're going to process a bunch of these bags, so you guys can kind of stay tuned for all that stuff coming up. And so here's a little up-close look at some of the stuff we're working with. And this is uh, the host rock or the wall rock. And uh, this is like a, a metamorphosed shale or a slate. Uh, and then here's the, the quartz, the ore that we're going to be um, looking for. And this is, this is where the gold's going to be. Um, but you can see in this pile, you know, like here's a piece of quartz. 
Um, here's a piece of wall rock. So it's kind of mixed up. There's probably about half quartz, half wall rock. Um, typically what happens is when you blast, the quartz uh, gets blasted pretty small and then the, the wall rock pieces and stuff that you didn't drill end up staying large. So one of the things I'm considering is running this through a grizzly um, and then taking the fines uh, and running them through the mill first and then taking the oversize and you can come through and sort out the wall rock so you're not having a bunch of time and energy wasted just milling rock that doesn't have any gold in it. Um, but looking up close here, let's see if I can get it to focus. Here's that pyrotite I talked about, that iron sulfide. Um, it's it's a end member of the pyrite family, essentially. It's just uh, uh, iron and sulfur. Um, that's the main mineral there. But the anytime you have that pyrotite, that mineralization you see there in the quartz, it typically is running pretty good with gold. And then, of course, you get some big uh, chunks of quartz float that uh, we found, and we, we dug those up. So I've got a few pretty good pieces. Uh, but here, just walking through and looking at some of these sacks, you can see we've got quite a bit of ore. There's a characteristic. A lot of it's not very big. Most of it's going to blast pretty easy. Um, and here's another huge chunk of quartz float that we got. Um, so some of that, actually, I may end up taking it to a, a guy with a rock saw and cutting that up and making slabs out of it, which might be cool and probably worth more as a decorative slab than uh, the gold that's in it. So that's another option for us um, going forward with some of these bigger pieces. So to process our ore, we're gonna use the one ton per hour turnkey system behind me, and we're gonna crush the rocks down to gravel size, then we're gonna pulverize them in our hammer mill to liberate the gold from the rock. Then the material is gonna flow down onto our four foot by eight foot shaker table. The gold and the heavy metals are gonna come across into our concentrate buckets. And then afterwards, we'll take our concentrates, pan them out, smelt them, and recover our gold.
So, so there's a good part of the gold out of the one and a half or two tons that we ran. This gets brushed down out of the grooves of the table when we're all finished off. Because it takes a while to build up in the grooves for it to be enough volume to, to sweep the gold out. So you always have to brush out what's left over after you're done running the ore. So we'll finish this off and tally it up. So we spread some of this gold out a little bit to see how it spreads out on the table when there's just gold. So everything on the left of this pile right here is on the downhill side of the ramp and is going back over under the water bar. And then there's some that we left on the downhill side of the ramp that's going to end up going down getting caught in this long groove and coming out here and over to the number one high grade hall. Alright guys, we got our concentrates here off the shaker table. There's our little bit of number one in there. And then here's our high grade number two, so we got a, quite a bit more volume here. Uh, but most of our gold's in the number one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan this out, recover as much free gold as I can, and then I'm going to take the rest of the stuff, the panning tailings, and I'm going to smelt them down and see how much gold I lost in my panning. But this is a quick, easy, fast way to figure out how much gold you got if you're out testing tailings piles or dump piles or you know old ore dumps. Um, and you don't necessarily want to go through all the trouble of smelting down all the concentrates and the number one and the number two. You just want to get a good idea of how much gold is in there and then you can get it weighed once you get it melted all down together into one big button. Um, so that's the process I'll do now. We'll get this stuff panned out. And then I'll show you how I'm going to melt it all down into a button and refine it to get all the lead and copper and other junk out of there. Alright, so we got our gold panned out here. And the lighting's not great, but there's our... There's our gold. And now I'm gonna take just a little snuffer bottle and get it all sucked up, and then we'll strain it through a cloth and wring the water out, and then we'll melt it all down into a little button. Okay, now I've got our snuffer bottle here. I don't know if you can see. I can chase this gold around, but. There's gold in the bottom there. It's, it's hard to see. But anyway, we got all our gold sucked up in our snuffer bottle there. And now I'm going to take uh, the gold and put it in this rag. It's just a blue shop rag. Um, I got a cup underneath. I'm going to take out the straw here. And if you guys have watched my other videos, you've probably seen me do this before. Um, I actually discovered this by accident. You can see the gold coming out of there. Um, when I wanted to try and clean up my gold here, I, I was going to try and cupel it, which is mixing it with lead after you've smelted it and everything. Um, and I had a bunch of gold, and it was almost clean, and I didn't want to smelt it because that just takes a long time. and, um, and Not a long time, but it's a little bit of a hassle and a little bit of an extra step and stuff. And so... I tried just direct cupelling it. I cleaned it up as best I could, got it in this rag, and uh, cupelled it, and ended up with a, with a really nice little gold button. And so I've since taken up to doing this whenever I'm kind of in a hurry or want to get a quick result and I don't have time to smelt. 
and I also like to pass this stuff on to you guys. So I've got most of my gold out of there. I'm going to save that. Obviously, I won't just dump it out. There's still just a little bit of gold in there. But here's our, let's see if I can get her focused here. Here's our gold and our rag. And now I'm going to take our rag, pull it up, and I'm just going to wring the water out of this rag. And all the gold is going to stay down here in the bottom in our, in our little, oh, it ripped. All right, plan B. I'm not going to be able to get as much water out as I hoped. Okay, don't rip it. In the future, don't rip it. But what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to cut it off here. I'm going to put this in our cupel. It's in the furnace. It's hot. And uh, it'll evaporate all the water off. It'll burn the rag. And it'll leave our gold um, all dried out in the cupel. So um, there's a there you go. Mount Baker Mining and Metals bloopers right here. All right, guys, here's our little gold button. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. And there you go. It might be hard to tell in the video, but it's pretty shiny yellow, so there's not a whole lot of silver in there. Um, and it's got those kind of cooling lines on the surface. So there you go, not bad for a couple hours of running this morning. Let me get the scale out, we'll see how much it weighs. All right, here's our gold. The stuff I panned out ends up weighing about 19 and a quarter grams. And that, those bags are somewhere probably around a ton and a half, maybe two tons. Um, so we're somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 grams a ton with that stuff. Um, and that's stuff I could pan out. Now let's go and smelt the uh, stuff I panned out, and then we'll also smelt some number two and see how much precious metal we have in there. All right, here's our number one panning concentrates. I left them in the frying pan last night, let them dry out. Um, and now we're going to uh, roast them. I'll heat them up to about, I don't know, 800 or 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes and get them roasted, drive off all that sulfur, and then we'll smelt them.
All right, so we got our lead button here, uh, knocked it off the bottom of our slag. I'm gonna put it in one of these cupels, and I'm gonna put it in our little electric furnace and drive off the lead and see what kind of precious metal button we got left. All right guys, so we've done all our experiments, all our smelting and stuff, and wanted to let you guys know how much gold I actually recovered. So here's the stuff that I panned out. That's that 19 and a quarter or so grams. This little button is the stuff that uh, came out of the number one panning tailings, the stuff that I panned out, that's the gold that I lost. And I smelted it down and got a little button out of there. So all together in the number one, we ended up with uh, about 21 and a third grams. And then I took some of the number two high grade that we had and smelted 300 grams of the number two and ended up with this little tiny bead here, which weighs right around a tenth of a gram. And I've dried out and weighed the rest of the number two concentrates and I have about three kilograms of that stuff. So multiplying uh, this number by 10, which I have about 10 times as much left, there's about a gram left or so um, in the in the number two high grade. That being said, it's not probably practical to uh, smelt down three kilograms worth of stuff to get one gram of gold. It's just, it takes too much energy and, and flux and time and all that stuff. So, um, But I wanted to share with you the end result from running our two sacks of stuff through our one ton per hour turnkey system. We ended up with right around that 10 to 15 grams a ton, even when it was all cleaned up and, and smelted down. So um, I think that was a pretty successful run. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.